Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him here. But the head detective the head detective of criminal affairs thought up this hideous beast. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist until two years ago. Sorry. <laughs> until the The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. Now I finally remember. Oh, brother. Just when you thought that thing that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, where in the room did you see him dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. Objection! This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh? And I suppose you have an explanation? If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was it Emma saw when the lightning when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? The blue badger hadn't even been dreamed up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it sits, as it st as 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 as. Hey, May. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Ah. Uh. I need to turn it. I need, I need to turn it. Does that count? Welcome home, May. <laughs> well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. Oh, Wolf's still here, too. No. It can't be! Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Objection! Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. Oh, I think... I can't remember the first time I played the case, but I think... I think it gave me a tough time. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it, Wolf. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, this changes everything. Indeed? Very well then. Please, tell us, what's different now that we know the witness saw this jar? Hmm. Oh wait, busy with Dragon Age. Why did I think you were like talking about work or something? No, it's fine. Keep playing Inquisition. 
I want to play Inquisition. It's sitting in my PS3 right now. Allow me to take these in... Blah, 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 blah. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. Not only that, but she saw it at a very specific angle. Knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. How are you guys already seeing dragons though? Because I'm playing and I am still stuck in Haven because I'm talking to everyone and I'm just like, wee! <laughs> so it's taking me forever to get out of like literally the first area because I'm just exploring everything. I don't know. I think I'm about to make my way out though. To whatever I have to do. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. Desk! <laughs> I don't know why I said it with such. I don't know. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room in Chief Gant's office. Objection! There's one in Haven? Well, I haven't come across it yet. Just kind of, I don't know, running around. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? They say it like it's a separate office and it's the same building. Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? Oh, I see. I don't think I, I went out that far. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and f and flew through the air. Flew, flew. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall? Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? A suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. <laughs> yes, after, after that long silence. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the prosecutor's award. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking... Yes. <laughs> no, yes. There's another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have uh, would have had no idea, but nevertheless... I... I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright? What's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall... Wow. That was beautiful. <sighs> you mean... Mr. Marshall died because of me? No! It true, girl. It true. Uh oh, she passed out.
I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What... what are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall! How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her! Well, it's not only spoilers not allowed, guys. He, um... Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forget- for- forgetting? Forgetting Evan- You for forge- <laughs> You- <laughs> Damn it! It was- If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Uh, evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. Forgetting evidence? <laughs> you know what, I was just thinking, I wish that they had like a... Well, they don't voice it, but... You almost wish for, like, a blooper reel. If they did voice it, that would be hilarious. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has, a, this has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Oh! Wolf approves of Cullen? I'm romancing Cullen, too. <laughs> Surprise! Hmm, touché, Miss Skye. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. Man, it's 8 o'clock. I need to eat dinner and then play Persona 3, but I'm really trying to finish this case. God damn it. Okay, May. Best of luck. And then Curry Sensei said lasagna and is making me hungry. I actually have pasta for dinner, so... Somehow. <laughs> that's... That's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. All ballots okay. If it's late for you, go ahead. Uh, sorry, it's in the evidence. I almost pressed the wrong thing. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. I know, it is a super long... Like, I even thought, okay, three more little thingies, blah, but then, ah... Uh, it's kind of dragging on. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. 
I'll probably, I mean, I've said it before, but I'm eating dinner alone today, so... Um... This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? Wait, I didn't mean to pick the blue badger! <laughs> like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar <laughs> a message was left here <laughs> on the surface of this jar it's a it's a jar I didn't pick the blue bag oh god that scared me so much what do you mean <clears throat> time to get back into it if you look closely you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar it looks like someone wiped the blood away the blue do we yes but no <laughs> I'm still laughing about it because I freaked I literally freaked out for a couple of seconds. Huh? Did it really? <laughs> that's pretty amazing that other people did the same reaction. I don't know why oh god. Maybe that shows we're not all totally paying attention. But I actually did hear a noise, and it was actually my neighbors, like, renovating something, or... I don't know. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a little... There is a line here drawn in blood. <laughs> so what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did, did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to, left to him to leave behind a message. Oh my god, I'm derping so hard. One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. N no! Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written, given the circumstances. The murderer's name. Phoenix, no. Phoenix, no. Phoenix, no. Phoenix, why you do this? Phoenix, no! It's a defense attorney's duty to prove his client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Well, Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye.
Seaworthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant, do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was, convi he was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ah! Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We are defenders of justice. What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite what anyone may say, the f this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How could he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! 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 The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to s una unable. <laughs> unable. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial is headed, no one knows. Is it saving here? Okay, I am going to eat dinner, but... I think I can, like, talk to you guys and stuff. I can still talk to you guys and still stream and stuff. So, like, so, like, what do you guys want to do? Listen.